Today I would like to talk about TR, which is what I call a dynamic surface notation. It seeks to expand upon and also act as a counterpart to works I have developed primarily for the preparation I do for my improvised practice. Chiefly, this piece centers upon the reconfiguring of my body's positioning towards the instrumental surface with regards to holding and control. It continues the theme of my research so far, the idea of decoupling oneself from learned and embodied traits in order to expand upon their possibilities. TR is recognizable because of the positioning of hands upon the saxophone it encourages, decoupling them from their positions as envisaged by instrumental design. In doing so, embodied digital patterns are transposed to another area of the instrument. As such, their previous functionalities are decentered, and we see an emergent basis for a new approach to the surface. The decoupling of the instrumental is accompanied by a visual decoupling of the notational, where instructions for each hand are found not in a modified left to right stave, but instead in distinct partitions on the page. The aim here is not to present a simple visual challenge to interpret the score, but to instead offer a particular notational surface that foregrounds a dynamic approach to gesture and phrase that is both planned and body-led, but also the result of moment-to-moment -moment construction. It will be interesting to see how this notation and subsequent research that accompanies it sits within the Vibrant Practices Symposium. I have found it useful to look at my practice with regards to the aesthetic framing of social ontologies, i.e. actors, networks and assemblages. However, viewing it through the prism of interaction, for example, allows us to focus on notation, enactment and improvisation and their entangled nature. The fuzziness which accompanies improvisation becomes the means, the apparatus with which we interpret the symbols of the notation. In this assemblage, improvisation is dependent upon the notation for something to take shape, and vice versa, their outcomes the result of their interactions. Another theme that has been present across my recent works has been for the notation to force a certain breaking of my instrumental technique. By encouraging approaches that lead to both the breaking of learned physical habits alongside unstable sonic outcomes for sounds that can seem quite literally broken. The main thrust of this inclusion is down to the very fact that certain breakings encourage further levels of breaking, necessitating a correspondence with my improvising self that solidifies and reconstructs centers and decenters. I trace the idea of breaking to one of my formative experiences in free improvisation. In 2006, I was lucky enough to be invited to improvise with percussionist Charles Hayward, bassist John Edwards and saxophonist Lowell Cocktail. On arrival, I was struck by Lowell literally rebuilding the crumbling neck of his soprano saxophone with bits of tissue and tape. Although his saxophone was far from functional in the traditional sense, he then went on to explore the subsequent agencies of the setting and broken the instrument in a way that is evidently stayed with me. As such, TR extends these ideas to the instrumental surface itself. Although by its very nature the main column of the saxophone is partitioned or broken every time a key is depressed, as a mechanical entity it relies on pads, tone holes, pillars, springs and the main stack all being in a relatively stable condition. However, when these elements fall out of alignment, as this notation attempts to encourage, the physical surface of the instrument suffers, pads become slightly displaced from the tone holes, and the instrument ceases to behave as it was intended. Thus, alongside the breaking and repositioning of physical actions, we have a type of breaking that, as a result of certain actions, provides the conditions for this notation. The notation su suggests scales of key depression as opposed to specific on-off directions as found in, tr in traditional notation. Some instru instructions require a depression that leads to the pad resting just far enough away from the tone hole that we begin to see the breaking of the horn taking place. In a sense, this is what happens when saxophones are literally broken because of it perhaps being dropped or because of failed pads or mechanisms. The design specifics of the saxophone and also other members of the woodwind family 
means that the mechanisms that are hand controlled are not consistent across the instrument unlike say the piano the three left hand side keys left hand low c sharp three right hand side keys and right hand low e flat key all achieve their pitch by being lifted off as opposed to being pressed down onto the instrument the notation has a uniform finger pressure scheme which in fact means two different things for each hand for the left pressure leads to ascending pitch characteristics less pressure means the breakage is more subtle and it's likely to cause unstable sound more pressure means breakage is more pronounced and it's similar to a conventional technique for the right hand pressure means uh, generally descending pitch characteristics less pressure means that breakage, breakage is more pronounced similar to conventional technique and more pressure means that the breakage is more subtle and it's likely to cause more unstable sound there is one exception to this the high key the high g key actually bridges across from the left to the right this key not only depresses depresses a key onto the saxophone but also lifts via mechanism the left palm f key as such depending on how par preparation or or indeed any part of the enacting process might be progressing, it is also sometimes possible for actions of one hand to link into the activity of the other. The finger scheme also limits the pool of pitches available, where the non-use of the bottom half of the instrument leads to the lowest possible pitch being around concert E flat, depending on my physical condition. The improviser is presented at all stages of enactment with the opportunity to co correspond with the di within the dynamic fray between instrument notation and what I term the carrier. The notation can be read vertically, horizontally and diagonally in all directions. Alongside the opportunity for each hand to follow a different route, the enacted fingerings are decided upon note to note. Pressure shadings as they overlap form a virtual contour with which to kinetically engage with the fingerings. Thus, although the notation on the surface level might seem quite blocky or event-based, in fact, the pressure shadings encourage a fluid sense of transitional mm -hmm. movement. It is also worth noting that there are no duration, durational stipulations for this piece. They emerge as the notation dynamically corresponds, corresponds with instrument, improviser and enacting. Other potential techniques that might be utilized, such as those coming from the diaphragm, voice, throat, tongue, teeth and lips, are absent from the notated surface. Instead, these materials form possibilities that may be improvised into an enactment. Part of working with the notation has been to assess how much of the preparation this notation has been for, and how much, if at all, it's sensed in performance. As Sophie Soze says of Baradian notions of phenomenon, the thing we research is enacted in entanglement with the way we research it. One of the most revealing aspects of my research has been to question how, if at all, the notations I produce might be felt in traditional notions of performance. Although they are designed for what I view as a conventional preparatory environment, so that which precedes, Instances of TR emerging in improvised group activity have been observable, particularly because of its unique physical approach. Thus, we see the embodying within the practice features of a notation designed to unearth new approaches, or the unknown, helping maintain a dynamic state where the main goal is not to be goal-directed. Observing elements of a notation slipping into a group improvisation whether by conscious or non-conscious intervention on my part, which, as an aside, is very difficult to document, has revealed enactment to be the non-linear host of the interactions between preparation and performance. Simply put, what constitutes preparation or performance has been difficult to ascertain. This aside, we see the potential for the interaction of parts to unearth new understandings and possibilities. To conclude, TR has been researched by its interaction with improvisation, and so my improvising self has been put to test by that notation. <laughs>